कोई जॉब में जाने पड़े बने ग्रेजुएट भाग में चले बिसाइड्स योर कोर करिकुलम व्हाट एल्स डू यू नो मैं सोचता हूँ अपनों करिकुलम तो बोला था भाई ऐसा तो बाहे ते बार ये उटा नया जेनरेशन को लगी कंप्यूटेशनल मैथमेटिक्स डेटा साइंस प कंप्यूटर साइंस स्टैटिस्टिक्स को जॉइंट प्रोग्राम और रन भाई रहा सर, सो यू नो हम ये वाला फोरम में बस दाखिली, ये वाला टेबल में बस दाखिली, हम लोग आपने एक काम कर लिया कोई रिसर्च एक वाला शेयर कर दाखिली, पॉसिबल इस पॉसिबल दैट वी विल बी एबल टू फाइंड सम कॉमन फोरम, मेरो गोल तेजी मात्रे इंटरैक्टिव गर्म प्रोग्राम लाई और बेरेज़ जो करा हरू मेले प्रेजेंट करने लूजली आई एम स्पीकिंग वेरी इन वेरी लूज सेंस नॉट इन वेरी टेक्निकल सेंस वेरी लूज सेंस कथित में करा हरू मासे ये प्योरली मेरो भी हो मेरो भी हो संग तो मैं डिसेग्री करना सकूँ सर इट्स नॉट ऑब्जेक्टिव प्लेंटी ऑफ़ थि� so basically expansion formula must be good super lab i'm going to start with what is expansion formula uh, the basic thing uh, in math and i'm going to talk about a solder basis that's also an expansion formula i'm going to talk about a risk basis then i'm going to go into orthonormal basis which we have already seen everybody knows orthonormal basis then i'm going to talk about what is over completeness and I'm going to introduce frames. And I'm going to talk a little bit about sampling sparse data. If it, the data is sparse, how do we sample this? Then I'm going to talk about finite frames that I have been working on. And I'm going to talk about finite frames with low mutual co uh, coherence. And I'm going to show you some slides. Basically, I plan to finish in 30 minutes. If you have any questions, again, anytime you can stop me, uh, we'll, we'll talk about that. अन्य मेरो बोलने वाले के लिए फास्ट बोलने बानी भाग बारे कल लेकिन फ्लो में बोल ले जाना केरी मैं स्किप कर रहा कैसे क्या हो चुका यू नो यू कैन ऑलवेज स्टॉप मी सो लेट्स डू दैट ऑल राइट सो इस बार उसे बोलूँ गिवन अ सिग्नल ये वाला सिग्नल जो जो हमी मैथमेटिक्स मैथमेटिक्स में हमी ऐ a vector in Rn. Uh, can we write a vector as a linear combination of some of the vectors? So, very long, say, verse of the Agarico, say, verse of the Purano problem. Can you write a vector in a vector space? You are in Manego, the Sajil Keso, Rn, Sajil Sankar Sakinsa. But even in infinite dimension, can we express can we express a vector in that space as a linear combination of the vectors? Uh, in in case if the x of k is an orthonormal basis, in that case the uh, the coefficient c of k are easy to find. The inner product bar find one second sir, coefficient line. A basis problem maneko expansion problem maneko mathematics ma. Uh, this is what it is. How do you expand a vector in terms of some given vectors? There are two questions with it. One thing is how do you how do you find c of k? The coefficient or cosine find karne. How do you find those coefficients? And once you find the coefficients, your linear combination can be converged. In finite dimension, ma converge करने को नहीं समझते भाई ना infinite dimension में convergence को ये वाला issue होता है. So there are two questions with this uh, with this expansion. So uh, mathematicians like Zoe Levani, your object like ये वाला function को रूप में नहीं समझते. Unlike engineers, unlike physicists, you know, we we just try to see if we can use a function to represent what this. Uh, reconstruction formula is so in terms of the function so given a function given a vector v i'm trying to get a vector another vector in that space and that's an operation and right here given uh, uh given a vector v i'm trying to take the inner product so i'm generating a bunch of numbers okay? so these are two operations okay? so these two operations uh we, we denote these operators, operators by the symbol t of x and t of x star. Okay. 
there is a reason why I'm using star. Otherwise, we, there's simply two operators. So we call them analysis and synthesis. The, this one is synthesis operator, because from out of C sub K, we find the vector. And this one is called the analysis. So from V, the given vector V, we find a bunch of numbers. So we call them uh, two operators. So uh, typically in a functional analysis course, in any math course you have seen, what happens is when you take uh, analysis followed by the synthesis, you expect to get the vector V. This is what we call reconstruction formula. So that's what the goal is. So we do analysis followed by synthesis. So we, we have to get the, the vector, same vector. In other words, this composition is going to be an, uh, this composition is going to be an identity operator. So we want this composition to be an identity operator. That's what the goal of expansion is. So Fourier analysis is one example of this. Taylor's formula is another example. Uh, there is a, a spline, spline functions. That all, all those expansion formulas just fall into this class. How do you find the coefficients? Like how do you find the Fourier coefficients of a signal? And once you have this, the Fourier coefficients, how do you construct the signal back? So this is what I'm trying to explain. So the question is, can we, can we do the same in more general spaces besides RN? <coughs> well, it turns out that in, even in Banach space, we can do this. So Banach space, people keep coming and they are asking this. So even in Banach space, a basis is known as a, a basis is called a solder basis. If for each f, there exists unique coefficients such that we have this expansion formula. Right? And this is a very a pure, pure mathematical view. Again, there is a pure math and there is applied math involved here. In pure, from pure math perspective, this is simply an expansion. And there is no way how we find the coefficients. All we want is if, if a vector can be written as a linear combination of some vectors, we call this a solid basis. So finding the coefficients is, not not very clear in this uh, in this definition. So a solder basis, from my perspective, is not very useful unless you use this theorem to prove some other mathematical uh, concept. Right? It's not uh, that applicable. Solder basis, although the origin goes back to Hamel basis first, and then we get solder basis. But then I'm going to modify a little bit to this solder basis, and we we get something called a Ridge basis. So solder basis ko yada sumo se kaise bane? Yo coefficient like C sub K like a permute gar diyo bane, permutation gar diyo bane, kyo series converge na karna sakta. It's not unconditional. So we want the the series to converge unconditionally. Unconditionally converge gar diyo bane, unconditionally converge gar ne basis like Ries basis bhaja. And Ries basis ko yada characteristic bhaja yo yo diyo la inequality satisfy kar sakte. So in other words, you know, this is bounded. Uh, if you notice something from Bessel sequence, this is something very close to being a Bessel sequence. On top of that, there's a lower bound here. So if a basis satisfies these stability conditions, yeah, which we call stability condition, we call this a Ries basis. But Ries basis is going to say, you have a function line, that is space now, you have a function line, expansion is going to be a stability condition, your solder basis is going to be strong. So you're saying Ries basis, by sorry. How about Ries basis? Banda bani asa sajilo basis khos nahi ho bani. Ries basis ma kaise bani? Analysis garda kiri, aur synthesis garda kiri. Farak farak basis use karna pani asa. Kine bani tio tio orthogonality hold karna hai na Ries basis ma. But kya uta basis orthogonal orthogonal basis hai nahi ho bani? If you have orthogonal basis, then the analysis, analysis ko padra, synthesis garnet padra, yodi basis ka number. Just one basis you can use for analysis and the same basis you use for synthesis. So uh, this basis is in, an example of normal basis. Of normal basis, you have F in, as a linear combination of uh, C sub K, S sub K. There is a way of finding C sub K. C sub K, when you in the proper mindset, and you see the like you have one, you converge the series. So orthogonal bases are the nicest one 
in, in pure math. They are nicest one, but not from the application point of view. Application point of view, your normal orthogonal basis for the uh, uh, contribution sign. This is look nice. Given a vector, for example, R and ma, have a, have a standard basis Leo one, standard basis is also normal. Also. That just looks nice, but that doesn't help much in, in practical applications. Uh, one of the problem that came from physics engineering is, is the localization problem. These are uh, these basis, for example, a Fourier basis. There is an echo. Somebody has. Amit Sa is Amit Sa. Amit Sa. Yes. yes. You want to ask something? No, no. I wanted you okay. to mute it. Okay, okay, okay. Okay. Please. So, our case of one Fourier series, my our disadvantage is Fourier go history is so ever so many body to history by many is our disadvantage case of one the Fourier series is localized. So, localized number of currently I like data go you you my Fourier series but represent Gada Kiri plenty of signals don't provide good results. Although Fourier is very, very good. It's excellent way of uh, uh, transmitting signals. But the prime reason being that the Fourier basis is not localized. So Fourier basis, to overcome this problem, some 20 years ago, in 80s, mid 80s and 90s, they come, came up with a single function. A single function, C, Psi, in L2R, and uh, J and K integers, two inch integers, and let's look at the dilation. So if we dilate the psi by two to the power j and translate by k. So every function is a psi, when function, just go translate or dilation. Dilation the translation le if the L2 R go lagi kuni orthogonal basis bonaibani. If the dilates and translates of a single function provides an orthogonal basis for L2 R, that function is known as a wavelet. That's the definition of a wavelet. Wavelet is basically, you can think of this being sine function, except sine function goes all the way through, okay? doesn't stop. But this function stops, this function is small function. But we use translation, we use shift. We translate right and left, and we also dilate. Dilate, sometimes there's a very high frequency in the signal, sometimes there's a very low frequency in the signal. Okay? So, the Fourier disadvantage case of Fourier window, window Fourier transformation, Leo, when the window size fixed also. Very high frequency, but very low frequency, use the window every once Fourier. Unlike that, the wavelet, wavelet transformation, so we have this dilation. So if there's a very high frequency, then we will dilate this and make this, make this wavelet very narrow function. And if there is a low frequency part, then we we make this uh, window wider. So the same function is actually, this function is, is the window, a kind of windowed Fourier transformation, except the window is flexible. Window line, shift bani karne, window line, flexible bani karne. So you want like narrow karne, time domain ma narrow karne, frequency domain ma wide one. Frequency domain ma wide karne, time domain ma narrow karne. That function C, C is known as a wavelet function. And this function, these functions came into being in 90s. Okay. 90s, plenty of functions. Uh, 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 one of them is Dobici. Dobici is, is a mathematician. She came up with compactly supported wavelets. Uh, there is all kind of literature about that. Haar function and Shannon functions are the ones physicists always use. And these Haar and Shannon are too extreme. Extreme and person. Haar function is highly time localized localized in time, but in frequency domain, Haar function is very bad. function Fourier transformation, you get oscillating curve. And Shannon function, for example, Shannon function ko kese bane, esko time localization, Ramrosa hai na, frequency localization, Ramrosa. So all other wavelets that we have lie in between Haar and Shannon wavelets. Har or Shannon, no, extreme end of person. You har or Shannon could be some of the compactly supported wavelet to prison. Basically, you compactly supported wavelet to Gurney, or a Hilbert space could be shown. They just represent a vector in a Hilbert space. Okay, so these are, these are two examples. 
Okay. Two example. One of the example is this is called hard wavelet, hard wavelet, and this is called Dovis wavelet. This is one of the Dovis wavelet. In the wavelet got a property. If I integrate the function from uh, negative infinity to positive infinity, although these are small waves, you don't have to go from negative infinity to positive infinity. But if you integrate on that domain, it has to have a zero value. So it's go value your area. Let's go area matigo, a tala area mila and zero one person. Let's go area matigo, tala mila and zero one person. That's one of the properties. So these are two examples. You function go translate Leovane, translate or direction Goribane, any Hilbert space or basis group number, canvas style. There are, and there are all kinds of other wavelets, smooth, you smooth sign of the ray. There are other wavelets, smooth, wavelet like smooth cause Neovane, it's called support, it's only your domain, support. Clones, but the answer. The you less localized the answer. These are highly localized. This one is the highly localized one, hard one. This one is a little more than that. Let's go, let's go support zero degree four summers, zero degree three summers. Okay. So uh, so what did I do? Uh, uh, as a PhD student, I I studied these wavelets for higher dimensional vector spaces. Generally, the problem case of one, if we have an image, for example, an image you want to uh, you want to compress the image or send that image as a, a signal from one source into the other source. Uh, as long as you have a one-dimensional wavelet, you can use one-dimensional wavelet in both directions, and you get something called tensor products. So one every direction my order wavelet by or good direction my or wavelet or one. Uh, you have a two-dimensional wavelet. Okay? There's nothing wrong with that. But two wavelet le, alikati, uh, alikati disadvantage. So, uh, every direction like every wavelet le, every direction like before versa, or good wavelet le, or like before versa. The vara, this uh, result is not wrong. So instead of that, in higher dimension, for example, in R2, can we come up with uh, a, a wavelet that's uh, that's not like a tensor product wavelet? You pro your question, I'll even open question, sir. There is answer, positive answer, I suggest. There are wavelets. R2 ma, your R1, R1 wavelet, I use Nagari Kane, R2 ma, Afne, or a wavelet, but on Sakiza. There is go, that's what I did in my PhD. I have some examples I produced. There are other examples also. The problem is one dimension must be two pre wavelet, by Sukha Vara, Junsuke wavelet, Suska Namalaga, when many, MATLAB use when Namalaga, when MATLAB has all these codes written, one dimensional. So you can use tensor product by taking uh, one dimensional on both directions. There are plenty of options. But these wavelets the zone we developed, uh, they are very specialized. You have to write code for those wavelets. So they are not very popular. So my PhD problem, problem was non-separable. The non-separable one ago, out of wavelet like uh, one dimensional tensor, or good dimensional tensor group, especially on NASA again. That's what I did in my PhD. So they, they generalize in any dimension, RM, not only image, they generalize in RM. All right, then, sorry. So a uh, uh, Hilbert space, man. Expansion problem, manego. Basically, expansion problem ma two other property ones. If we say that set of vectors le span kar sakhi kar dena. Do the vectors span the space or not? And are they linearly independent or not? Okay. Basically, two questions. So, are they independent? Do they span or not? So, uh, for example, orthonormal basis ma obviously orthonormal bases are linearly independent. They span. They are on top of that, they are orthonormal. So they are really nice, but not nice from the application point of view. They are only nice for examples, for to show examples to students, for example. When you are teaching REN, those orthonormal bases are the best one to talk about, but they are not the best. You know, nobody talks about Fourier bases, for example. When you are teaching finite dimensional vector space, uh, nobody gives an example of a Fourier basis because they are really useful and they're really complicated. The orthogonal basis, like standard basis, are the easiest one to present, but they are not applicable from my point of view. So now question is, over the past 15 years, this is a, something like past 15 or 20 years ago, some people asked, 
what if we drop linear independence? Do I need independence? Linearly independent science, independent science, science, on your question, I have a see. Then people started asking this question. Your data science, I saw give a see. How many computer you can go to give a see. Your data lab change oil because we use this digital stuff, digital camera, MRI, you know, all these JPEG image, image, uh, images. So they started asking, when you want to have an expansion problem, you want to express a vector in terms of some vectors, do you have to have linear independence? The answer is actually no, we don't need independence. The independent one person is a reason. The independence like independence like drop gorneogane, only thing we lose is the coefficient in the expansion are not going to be unique. The coefficient the series ma the coefficient on it, constant, C sub K, the coefficient are unique within. Our question also unique science exam then. The coefficient are unique one person then. The answer is no, we don't need to have coefficient to be unique. Unique verbal advantage, sir. The unique verb advantage, sir. Unique no verbal advantage, sir. You know what? Unique why no money? There's a plenty of options. There's a plenty of flexibility, plenty of way we can construct the basis. So when you are hiding data, when you are sending from one source into the other source and you want to hide your data, when you have plenty of options, there's a plenty of way we can hide our data. Okay. The only thing we lose is the uniqueness of the coefficients. So this is where the frames come in. The frame, it's a very new new topic, it, although it came into being about 20 years ago, but most of the research on frame theory was done in past 10 to 12 years. What is a frame? Well, I'm gonna just write the definition of a frame. I, here is the definition of a frame. A frame in a finite dimensional vector space, it doesn't have to be finite dimension. It can be L to R, infinite dimensional space. The definition works the same way. All I want is I want more vectors than the dimension. I want more vectors than the dimension. Because this is how I lose independence. If I have less vectors than the dimension, then I lose a span. They don't span. So they have to span the space as well. For them to span, they have to be more than the dimension. So once I have more than the dimension, I lose independence. So we're using more than I need. So it has to have these, these inequalities and this the, the upper inequality, right inequality is just like a Bessel's inequality, a sequence of vectors, sequence of function, satisfying, satisfying Bessel inequality. Basically these are bounded. Uh, and the, the first inequality says that the analysis operator, the one I talked about a few minutes ago, analysis operator, there's analysis operator involved here, there's a synthesis operator involved here. So the analysis operator is one-to-one -one and the synthesis operator is onto. These are key things required for this reconstruction. The analysis operator has to be one-to-one. -one. The synthesis has to be onto for the reconstruction. Of a Fourier basis, ma, orthonormal basis, ma, bane, analysis operator bane, injective, bane, injective, bane, subject, invertible, bane, synthesis, bane, invertible, bane, really invertible. Bane. If we use more vectors than we need, those analysis and synthesis operators, operators are no longer invertible operators. But what is key is the analysis has to be injective and the synthesis operator has to be subjective before I talk about the reconstruction. And that's what the inequality are, are saying. The inequality, I'm mean, saying, your, your inequality ma equality like frame like tight frame mention if a equals b if a happens to be equal to b we call this a parcel frame a parcel frame parcel when a word say physicists less you know mathematical physics ma first few days mathematical physics parcel parcel identity but a parcel frame I if a equals b this is just like a parcel identity so parcel identity satisfy lagi basis one person one is a reason you don't have to have a basis yeah? you can have uh, you can have a, a more than basis a little more than basis is still you can have a possible identity. the key is do we have possible identity or not yeah? the requirement is we have to have a possible identity satisfied yeah? so possible identity satisfied or no laggy underlying state of vectors lay basis one person is a reason basis one the body body one evidence the body one on we get flexibility so, uh, 
So let's, let's say there is a uh, orthonormal basis for Hilbert space. And orthonormal basis, you, 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 your equality satisfies us, this equality, which we call partial equality, sometimes called partial identity. The spanning sets are, are precisely the finite frames in finite dimension. The spanning set, one again, or a frame. Frame money, what is frame money? money? So, you know, some of the this is spanning set. As long as they span, they, I'll look at the technical details, sir. The spanning set, one of the spanning or a line of frame money. Sir. They don't have to be linearly independent. Linearly independent, who for them? Linearly independent, who have a case of one, it's a bit tight work, it's structure. The structure is so tight that if you lose one, one director from that set, you lose everything. The information is lost. When you, are, when you are using frame, even if you lose some of the data, you don't lose everything. You can always reconstruct back of signal. And possible frames satisfy the possible identity. Every orthonormal basis is a frame, but there are plenty of more, more, what is this? More frames. Then also the possible frames satisfy the reconstruction formula. The reconstruction formula, this is, this is C sub K. C sub K and uh, this is, I'm using the same frame for analysis and same frame for the, the synthesis. Yeah. Sometimes again, there is something called dual frame, like a dual basis. Sometimes there is a, a, a frame you can use for analysis and uh, reconstruction, both. Sometimes we have to use different basis, just like a different basis for analysis and synthesis depending on what kind of frame it is. But there are frames that can be used for analysis and synthesis. Uh, the same frame can be used for both. Sorry, you know, I'll get the mail is keep worrying. I'm not going to explain it again. A frame is basically, what is a frame? A frame is a redundant set of vectors. Redundant meaning they're unnecessary. There is some redundancy in that set. For example, R2, R2 ma frame gonna be one is just find three vectors. Three vectors as long as they span R2. You can find plenty of ways, three vectors in R2. Plenty of ways as long as they span, they make a frame. So the row to thin of vector leave one as long as they span. Yeah? Well, what is a frame? Well, a frame is a over complete system, we call this over complete system. Over complete meaning that a basis is a complete system. We call basis a complete system because it spans exactly the space. So uh, a frame has more elements than, than we need. So they, the first time they noticed frame was in 1952 when they talked about non harmonic analysis. And there was a harmonic analysis consisting of sine and cosine functions. Uh, uh, and there was a uh, Two mathematicians, I think they were physicists as well. They were talking about non-harmonic analysis, and this is when they discovered this frame. But the story of frame uh, came into being only in the last 20 years or so. It was silent until that. That then, but there was there was non-harmonic analysis in 1952 or 1956. Yeah. And uh, they use frames in image processing, data compression, data transmission, and pure and applied mathematics. Plenty of pure and applied mathematics use frames. And also they use in operator theory, theory, algebraic geometry, manifolds. These are some of the places where frames show up frequently. And there's one problem where physicists and mathematicians both have in common is something called phaseless, phaseless reconstruction of a signal. Phaseless reconstruction. What is a phaseless reconstruction? Let me put it in a simple way. So given a four year, uh, you know, a lot of times when you have this MRI or some, some instrument, you know, they capture the Fourier coefficients of a signal. From Fourier coefficients, can you, can you construct the signal? Well, we can always do that. From Fourier coefficients, you know, there, is a, there are algorithms. We can always capture the signal from Fourier coefficients. But now the question is, if we, if we are given the absolute values of the Fourier coefficients, absolute values of the Fourier coefficients, can we still reconstruct the signal? So when you are taking the absolute values, we lose the phase. The phase information is lost. For example, taking the, the absolute value of a complex number, say four plus three i. If I take the absolute value of four plus three i, I lose the information about the, the phase. So if we lose phase, 
can we still reconstruct the signal is the question. Well, the answer is not completely, but we can actually get the signal up to the up to the phase. We don't uh, get the exact phase, but for example, four plus three i can be four minus three i, for example. So I have a very, I have a complex number four plus three i. I I take its absolute value. From absolute value, I want to get my complex number. Okay. This problem is not actually a well-posed problem. It's, it's not a well-posed problem. But there is still a way of finding of the phaseless signal. So how do you do that? Is it still being investigated. In some dimension, you know, in, this one requires a fairly large number of Fourier coefficients, fairly large. It's not a very straightforward problem, the very large number. I don't remember what number is that, but it's a very large number. And they use this in compressed sensing. I'm gonna finish in a few minutes. Compressed sensing, sparsity. Basically, when you have a sparsity, when we have it, we live in digital digital world where all of the images we use are sparse. And the 5, 5G technology that is coming in a few years, I think the 5G technology is already built. It's come, maybe it might come anytime soon. They use frames in there because of the sparsity of data. And MRI, for example, the sensing mechanism of MRI, uh, you know, frame can be used there. The reason why MRI is very slow because their sensors cannot, they, they sense very sparse data. Most of the data the, the MRI senses is useless. Because of that, they cannot read. So the question is, how do you, read, how do you get the data that you need? So can we can we get the data that we need? Just can we not get the unnecessary data? It's still an open question. So this is where the frames show up. It's not, it's not only the frame, there are other ways as well. Frame also show up there. And one of the place which I don't know, I'm putting a question mark is quantum information theory. I, I have no idea about this, what this is. I just Googled a few, few days ago about this quantum because a professor giving a talk two days ago in our department talk about, talked about quantum information theory. And I, I, I wanted to know what that is. You can Google this quantum information theory, comma frame, the beautiful frame theory in terms of physics, except we call frame elements, you guys call them states. I saw that you, they use different symbol, or the bracket kind of symbol, they call states. Inequality, I talk, showed you a few minutes ago, the inequality, frame inequality, exact same thing. In quantum information theory. But other than that, uh, I'm not a physicist. Uh, I don't know, but they use that. Okay. One of the frames that I have been using is what we call equiangular frame. So can we construct an equiangular angular frame in R5? Or how many frames does R5 have that are equiangular? So equiangular meaning that, for example, uh, let me show you this. Okay, I'll talk about equiangular in a few minutes. So I'm gonna finish, uh, I have maybe a few more slides only. So what is a compressed sensing? So I'm gonna skip my next slide, but let me finish this slide, okay? So let there be a vector in REN. Okay, sorry. So the, if there is a vector in REN, and vector of length n, so how many measurements are re really needed to capture it? So how many measurements do I have to have it? It's a very open question, depending on the type of vector. And if, can a few measurements, if I only take a few measurements, can I still get my vector back? And what are the efficient data acquiring schemes? So how do you, how do you acquire those data? Because the way we acquire data, you know, we, we reconstruct the signal. For example, MRI does differently than digital camera. Are the recovery process stable? So the process has to be stable. So there is a two way. Philosophically, there are two ways we do this. One thing is we acquire data and we use uh, compression, meaning that we use in terms of Fourier series and we only keep first few large coefficients. Okay. The rest of the coefficient we disregard. And this is what you call data compression. For example, JPEG. JPEG is an example of this, data compression. Okay. The other philosophy is 
we acquire only the information that is needed for the recovery of the signal. Can we only acquire something that we need? Well, this is still being investigated. An example is this MRI, for example. If this is successful, MRI would be very fast. As of now, you know, we see MRI is a very slow process because a lot of the data we the, the machine acquires are useless. They don't provide any information because of the, uh, the sparse sparsity. So mathematically, we put as, as a vector. So mathematically, I have a vector in REM. That's my acquiring scheme. Acquiring scheme meaning that sampling. I'm taking only a few samples. I have data in REM. I multiply by A. It's a linear, it's a linear process, linear sampling problem. So instead of having X, I have AX. So AX is what I acquire. AX is Y. AX, is, AX lives in REM. So instead of having a vector in REM, I have a vector in REM. So from that vector, can you get, can you get the vector X? Can you get the vector X? So how do we recover X? Well, it turns out that in principle, again, in principle, the number of measurement M must be as large as the signal length is. In principle, in principle, you have to have as many as N measurements. You know, when I have a N length of R3 vector, sir, if I have a vector in R3, R3 vector has length three, you have to have three measurements in principle. But this, uh, this, there is a Shannon sampling theorem of continuous time signal that says that the sampling rate must be twice as high as the highest frequency. In the, there is a limit below which you cannot go. You have to have a, there's a lower bound on how many samples do I need. The problem is that if M happens to be less than N, the system becomes underdetermined, implying that there are infinitely many solutions. So that's useless again. The, the question is, in a digital data, in the digital world, what you see is a lot of signals are sparse. So if the signal we're talking about is a sparse signal, then we can have M less than N. M can be less than N, we can still reconstruct the signal. So this is where the sparsity shows up. So for example, salmon sampling theorem provides a lower bound on how many samples do I must have. So if this data is sparse, if the signal is sparse, then you can just go below the Shannon sample, the, the, the one that is provided by the Shannon sample limit. Something known, known as the Nyquist frequency, you can actually go below that. But this is only if the signal is sparse. Okay, let me move on to the next one. So how do you solve this equation? So for example, I have a vector in REM, I only have Q data, I only have M data. M data, few of them. So a natural question in mathematical class is how do we solve this equation? We find L2 solution, least square solution. Right? So everybody knows about least square solution. You know, if the, the system is uh, does not have enough number of equations, the best we can do is least square solution. So what does, the, what does the, it do? If I have a sparse signal, see this is a sparse signal. If I solve the system by using least square, that's what the answer is gonna look like. So the, the numbers are seen here. These, these spikes are seen here. These spikes are all seen here, but there is these small spikes, these which we call noise. This noise shows up in the solution. That's what the least square solution looks like. So that's not useful. So what I want is, sorry, I want this signal. If I have this signal and sample it, I sample by, this is a hundred by hundred. This is a sample of size hundred, a vector of length one hundred, sparse signal. But what am I doing? Is I'm sampling only eighty points. I have a signal of length eighty, one hundred. I'm sampling only eighty of them. From out of only eighty samples, I want to know: Can I get my actual signal? Well, the least square solution does not provide a solution. I showed you a few minutes ago. This is why solution is, is useless in this setting. So what is useful is what we call L1 solution. Just like L2 solution, there's L1 solution. L1 norm, if you know about L1 norm, L1 norm supports sparsity. So 
So if you are looking for the sparse solution, the best you can do is L1 solution. Now the question is, how do you find L1 solution? Well, finding L1 solution is very complicated, very difficult thing. It's not like finding L2 solution. So there are uh, there are algorithms. There is a there is all just like MATLAB. There is a separate convex up there something called convex optimization problem to solve the system for L1 solution. So my problem, my my thesis is my the, my current problem is how do we sample this? You know, finding the L1 solution before I find the L1 solution. What is my sensing mechanism? You know, how do I sense the data? How do I sense it? So from out of 100 samples, I sample only 80 of them. But how do I do that? What mechanism do I do, use? So it turns out that if I use a frame to sample, a frame is a, a frame is a M by N vector. It's M rows and columns. So it's not like N by N, it's not like a Fourier matrix. So it has uh, less rows, more columns. If I use a frame, so and if I multiply this by a vector of length n, I'm going to get a vector in R m. So my vector, is, my vector is going to be of a small size. So I'm capturing only few information. From those only few information, I want to get back the whole x. Can I do that or not? Depends on what kind of frame is this. Well, it turns out that if the frame is, if the frame is Incoherent, incoherent meaning that the angle between any two pair of them, if the angle between any two pair of them is as far as possible. If the angle between them is as far as possible, for example, orthogonal basis, the angle between them is 90 degree, is 90. That's the maximum they can have. But if there are more vectors than the dimension, you can't have 90 degree. You cannot go 90 degree. It has to be less than 90 degree. Yeah. So the question, question is, This is called mutual coherence problem. So can we, can we minimize the coherence? Minimize the coherence meaning that can we make the angle between any two of them as high as possible? Okay. And there is a lower bound already. This is a standard result from math. The lower bound is given. Below this mu, we cannot go. It, has, it is given by M and N. So for example, R2, you want to have three vectors in R2. How many choice do I have? Well, I'll show you in a few minutes in R2. This is the lowest you can go. So if, if you have three vectors in R2, this happens to be one half. This, this number happens to be one half. You can compute this, one half. And this mu is one half. If mu is one half, you know, this is actually dot product of this. This is a, a you know, inner product. If you think of this being dot product, the dot product, absolute value of the dot product of the vector is one half. The vectors have to be, the angle between them has to be 120 degree, 120. 120 degree, the best. Otherwise you can have three vectors, you know, with any, any as long as they are not collinear, they will provide a frame. But I'm talking about frames consisting of vectors that are as far apart as possible. Now the question is, can this lowest lower bound be achieved? It's yes, not a very straightforward question. In some dimensions, it is possible. In some dimension, it is not possible. There are some standard results about that. We can achieve that. But the question is, how do we achieve those things? Is very complicated problem. Even though the theorem says that it can be achieved, but how do we construct those vectors? So let me show you in this example. This thing. So for example, R2. In R2, if I want to have two vectors, if I want to have two vectors in R2, the best I can have is orthogonal basis. The orthogonal basis is a frame. Two vectors in R2. If I want to have three vectors in R2, I want to have three vectors in R2, but I want those vectors to be as far apart as possible. There's only one way I can do that. Only one way. The angle being 120 degrees, the logo of Mercedes Benz car. That's, a, that's the only way. You can rotate these vectors and this thing, this, this, this shows up in quantum mechanics plenty of times. Now, again, I don't know what quantum mechanics I was, I was told by uh, people working on this area. This 
equiangular equiangular setting is a natural setting for those uh, states in quantum mechanics. But this one is an example in, uh, in R2. So what is my research? My research is uh, uh, I have been using frames, which I call fat matrices. Frames, fat matrices meaning that rectangular matrices to construct the deterministic models. Uh, deterministic meaning that these days uh, the applications are all random matrices. You know, the, for example, MRI, MRI samples randomly. Those are random. There are other applications where random sampling is done. Randomly, they take samples. You know, randomly, they take samples. From those random samples, they try to reconstruct the, the image. And that works perfectly well, random sampling. But if we want to control your mechanism, if you want to have your mechanism under your control, we have to have a deterministic model. So there are not many few, not many deterministic models, but one of the way is uh, by using frame, by constructing frames, we, we develop this. Some examples of frame with low, low mutual coherence are, are provided. One of my paper that I did a few years ago. So in our, this is 100 vectors, 100 vectors, uh, in let's say R60, R60, the dimension is 60. This space is R60, this point, and I want 100 vectors. So if I want to have 100 vectors in R60, can we construct those things? Can, what is the mutual coherence going to be? The yellow line is the lowest you can go. The lowest you can go is this yellow line. This blue line is the one I my paper produces by it's basically using MATLAB code. And this one, red one, was done by somebody else. Somebody else has different had different way of doing that. I was doing this using something called singular value decomposition. I use a singular value decomposition of a matrix, and I somehow I squeezed the singular values, you know, by squeezing from top and bottom by making those singular values small, and I iterated thousand times. Eventually, I was able to make the coherence. Coherence meaning that the angle between any two pairs as high as possible. So if you if you are taking R80, R80, but take 100 vectors. I still, you know, the way I develop this, this 100 has to be fixed. I can say it's that 100 to 120 or 1000, but this, the way this is done, R80, in space R80, if you want to have 100 vectors, the mutual coherence can be even low, lower than that. And if you are using R80, R100, R100 and take 100 vectors. In that case, what is the mutual coherence going to be? Well, mutual, mutual coherence is going to be zero. Because in that case, you have 100 vectors in R100. So the angle between them is going to be perfectly 90 degrees. Perfectly 90 degrees. You know, all vectors are mutually orthogonal. Again, uh, I apologize if I, if I went over time. Uh, again, I apologize if this did not make sense, but next time, if you give me a chance, I will be more concrete. You know, I'll do some research on physics and uh, I'll make it accessible, but based on the time I had, this is the best I could do. If you have any questions, we are open for questions now. Thank you very much. Binil, sir. Okay, Anil uh, Sarlai Parkhide Garda. Thank you, uh, Dr. Gansam Bhatta, uh, for this uh, wonderful um, and very complicated thing in simple words, but not for me, maybe for many. <laughs> okay, well, <clears throat> uh, I will start now. Uh, I can see Narayan Adhikari sir has uh, some questions or comments. Please, okay. Narayan sir, go ahead. Uh, okay, uh, uh, just a thank you, Dr. Sir. So nice. Uh, Ani tapaile jo physics, uh, mathematics, even applied samman jo dera gare ko asadhe ramro ra uh, highly motivating sa dasta lagza malai. Yeste ek hal lete hain. Ali kati math bani directly angusa bani yawa ni math padne globally jo un kaate ko sa chala hai bada unhe help karna dasta bani lagza malai. To chutei pura kani garamla tesma hai na. Sare ramro interesting. 
इसमें मलाई सानो एक दूसरा तेरी और जो फर्स्ट स्लाइड में जाऊँ तो सर बट सर मुझे अलग अलग के मिस करें कि बंदी जस्ता लगता है अजूर को फर्स्ट स्लाइड में जाना सुना ओ ये इसमें ओ इसमें जो आर्यन रे एक्स को एक्जेक्ट रिलेशन के समझे अलग मिस पाई ना रा एक्स अब क्या बने को एक्स अब क्या एक्स वाले को यो मल्टीप्लाई करेंगे वही ना यो एक्स साइन कैपिटल एक्स रा आरएन को रिलेशन यो कैपिटल एक्स वाले को स्टेट ऑफ वेक्टर्स हो यो स्टेट ऑफ वेक्टर यो एक्स वन एक्स टू एक्स थ्री हज़र एक्स एन वेक्टर्स हो ना ये ला डिवन यो स्टेट वाले वाला ये वाला स्टेट ऑफ स्टेट वेक्टर्स अन्य तो आरएन सा नहीं फेरी हज़र � क्यों X R N भीतर पढ़ने वाला सेट हो सानो सेट हो R N भीतर पढ़ने सानो सेट ओके डिस्क्रिप्ट सेट हो ये X N में X में फॉर एग्जांपल R two में R two में दूसरा वेक्टर लियो बने मतलब X को डिनोट करेगा दूसरा वेक्टर ओके 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 सर बेसिस बनो ना X इसको तो बेसिस बनी हो X बेसिकली सबसेट ऑफ R N बायो सबसेट सबसेट लाइन मतलब बेसिस कोर तरह निकाय यूजफुल एकदम रामरो सारे रमाले लाया सर अब ये स्टेगरी जो नेपाल में पनी अली मैथमेटिक्स में इंटरेस्ट जगाओ नहीं खाल का टॉक वरुपा नहीं यार लेते हैं दिनों तब अन्य आज करें उसे मेले मैथमेटिक्स में अली गति ग्लोबली कर दा हमरो थियोरिकल फिजिक्स में नहीं करते हो जस्ट कुछ से च इंट्रैक्शन uh, हो मैथ को काम मैथ ले मतलब बुजुर्ग रिसर्च लाइफ एकदम हाई हाई क्लास को रिसर्च मारेंगे जो तो बाजार में इंसान थे तो सब लोग रहते हो तो अब जो अलग को टेक्नोलॉजी यो अलग को यो कंप्यूटर एज इंटरनेट को एज लेकर जाके रही अब जो छोटे-छोटे ग्रैंड करो माँ इंटरडिस्प्लेनरी बन सकती है मेरे को � फिजिस्ट उनसे तो जो भी उनसे है ना तो अब मैथ को रिजल्ट मैथ ले मतलब उसने जल्दी सुखे राम रिजल्ट करे होने को नहीं अब वो मार्केट में सेल करना तो गारस है सर मैं ये बड़ा सोची आलम हूँ आज एक चीज प्रभाकर जी आज क्या आये मैं पार्टिसिपेंट ला नहीं यार हाथों था उन्हें रिक्वेस्ट कर सो सर नमस्कार गणेशन जी नमस्ते नमस्ते हजुर मैं राजेंद्र पराजुली आम्र राज सॉरी बनी चाहूँगा को इन्हें मैं एक क्वांटम मैकेनिस्ट पढ़ाऊँ सु रा क्वांटम मैकेनिस्ट पढ़ाऊँ दा केरी आई मी हिलबर्ट स्पेस को पुराय करता हूँ अन्य यो विद्यार्थी लाइ बुझाऊँ नहीं इसाबले हिलबर्ट स्पेस स्पेस में दूरा एलिमेंट को बीस में एंगल मेजर करना सकें सकी सकी देना एंगल मेजर करना सकें सब हिलबर्ट स्पेस को एक बड़ा एडवांटेज हो ओवर द बना के स्पेस इस वी कैन टॉक अबाउट एंगल्स तो मैं यो अंतिम देखा रहा हूँ स्लाइड में बनी तो एंगल में कंट्रोल करना सकें सकी सकी देना बनी मेजर क्वेश्चन कोरुप मा एक्सप्रेस करना सकी 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 दन यो 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 बेसिस बेसिस कोरुप मा और यो ऐलाय हम हम ले ऐलाय कंप्लीट बन सो यो सीक्वेंस एक्स बने आते मेले ऐलाय हम लोग मैथमेटिकल लैंग्वेज में ऐलाय कंप्लीट वाव बने दिस दिस यास भी कंप्लीट एंड वी कैन टॉक अबाउट द एंगल बिटवीन देम तो एंगल को � I mean, two of the relations mainly use work negative, so closer relations, completeness, and then you have a scalar code. The scalar code is the angle, that's what I'm trying to say. And you have a closer relation, so you use work some. Closer relation. Two of the relations are mainly the same. Completeness. Completeness, and closer relations are the same. Exactly. So, if you have a question, 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 
मतलब लाख से कभी कभी आरु मैथ में कंप्रोमाइज़ करना सकी देना अभी मेरे विद्यार्थी वाले सदने ही मेरे क्वेश्चन सोचते हैं तो मैं जब वाले को क्वेश्चन में सदने ही वाले सुनिए उड़ा उड़ा सेट लाइक कॉम्पैक्ट शो कर लाइक की करने पर जब वाले उड़ा कई कॉम्प्लिकेटेड कॉन्सेप्ट्स हैं मैथ में एवरी फाइनाइट कवर एवरी कव ओपन कवर हैज अ फाइनाइट सब कवर भाव वाले तले कॉम्पैक्ट होने मतलब विद्यार्थी वाले इसको सिस्टम और करे होता है ना यो तक हमें ले बुझ दिया देना एवरी कवर ओपन कवर हैज अ फाइनाइट सब कवर होने को तो हमें खबर में आप सीधे सीधे ना मानते विद्यार्थी वाले तो तले हमें कॉम्प्रोमाइज करने से होता है जैस हमने तो नहीं हिलवर्ट स्पेस लाई खासकर ये क्वांटम मैकेनिक्स में यूज़ करता कि री तेरे को सब स्पेस में जाए आइगन वैल्यूज़ और एक्सपेक्ट कर रहा है उनसे जून से हमारे रिजल्ट होने तो रिजल्ट जाए एक्सपेरिमेंटली मेजर करना सकने खाल को होने पर हो सॉरी जून को एंगल बनने वाली तो ऑब्वियसली चा� त्यो आई मी गॉर्स ये उटा कुरा मायले यानी रा स्वोध ना चाहे जून हिलवर्ड स्पेस ला आई मी डिफाइन करता केरी आई मी हिलवर्ड स्पेस जे वेक्टर स्पेस बन्चो किन्हों में तो आम्रा आर्गुमेंट थियो आई मी ले अपनो खाल को स्टेट बने रा स्टेट अपा फिजिकल सिस्टम बने रा आई मी डिफाइन गॉर्स हूँ सब स्पेस में अपनी आइगन सब स्पेस बन जो आइगन बने को अब मैं लिखा दिलो बात हो यहाँ लगा था चंद चाहो यहाँ लाये तो आइगन बने को चाहे हमें लिख दे आइगन वैल्यू अच्छा बनो त्यां बड़ा मेजरेबल कुने क्वांटिटी फिजिकल क्वांटिटी चाहे ड्रॉ करना सकने और एक्सपेरिमेंटली वेरिफाई करना सकने तो सब स्� अरे अन्य त्यो प्रोजेक्शन ऑर्थो नॉर्मल प्रोजेक्शन वन सो आज है ऑर्थो नॉर्मल प्रोजेक्शन दस करें अन्य यो कुराला अलग दिन है अलग दिन क्लियर कर दिन ऑर्थो नॉर्मल प्रोजेक्शन बड़ा स्वाभिष्ट स्पेस में गोए बनी तेज़ पर आउटकम निश्चिन्त करा हम ही तो वन सो आइगन वैल्यू निश्चिन्त सा किन तेजस्ली तो फंक्शन लाई अथवा वही फंक्शन बनो तेज को प्रोबेबिलिटी लाई स्क्वायर इंट्रीवेबल फंक्शन बनना बन रहा है उनसे अमिले स्क्वायर इंट्रीवेबल फंक्शन से टॉर्मिनेट होने पर सा बन रहा है उनसे कंजर्व बन सा बन रहा है उनसे अने त्यो बाउंड्री में अमिले आइगन वैल्यू निकालना खोजता हूँ मतलब तुम्हें कोई क्वेश्चन पूछे अब यो हिलवर्ड स्पेस को स्केलिंग को जो टर्मिनोलॉजी मामा एकदम पोर्स हो तो जो प्रोजेक्शन हम लोग ने यूज़ करते हैं प्रोजेक्शन आगे बैलू आगे स्पेस जो कैसे बने आर थ्री मा आर एन मा प्रोजेक्शन करने पड़े बने और तो नॉर्मल प्रोजेक्शन करने पर इस अगेंस्ट � प्रोजेक्शन करने पर बने सब स्पेस में, फॉर एग्जांपल आर एन माइनस वन, आर एन माइनस वन ले आर एन आर एन माइनस वन आर एन को सब स्पेस बन जाए। अजू। नेचुरली सब स्पेस बन जाए। ऐसे सब स्पेस आर एन माइनस वन, ऐसे सब स्पेस बने को तो लास्ट एंट्री में हमने जीरो रखने पर सं, इन तो छोटे भीतर करने पर नहीं तो वेरी लास्ट एंट्री तो लास्ट एंट्री लाइज़ जीरो मात्रा कर दियो बने लास्ट एंट्री लाइज़ मात्रा जीरो करे बने तो वेक्टर्स हैं एक्चुअली आर एन में बाय पनी तो वेक्टर्स हैं एक्चुअली आर एन माइनस वन में पर्सन जिन्होंने एन माइनस वन डिमेंशन में पर्सन तो वेक्टर दैट दैट प्रोवाइड्स एन एग्जांपल ऑफ � अन्य अन्य तीस लाय सब स्पेस में जैसे आइगन सब स्पेस में जैसे अर्थनॉर्मल प्रोजेक्शन बने को पनी तीस एडिशनल क्या कुछ था पिंजा की तो तो डिपेंड्स ऑन तो सब स्पेस में बार बार सकते सब स्पेस में तो सब स्पेस को रहा तो उसको बीच को एंगल इन्वॉल्व बन सकते इसमें तो तुम्हारे यूज़ करने वाले ग्रैंड स्मिथ ऑर्थ 
त्यो प्रोजेक्शन चाहिँ अर्थोगन अर्थ आइगन स्पेस मा गर्दा खेरि त्यो नेचुरल प्रोजेक्शनहरु अर्थोगनल नहुन पनि सक्छ त्यो मलाई एक्ज्याक्टली थाहा भएन नेचुरल प्रोजेक्शन इफ यु रियली वांट टु हैव अर्थोगनल प्रोजेक्शन त्यो के एडजस्ट गर्नु पर्छ ए मैले अहिले त यही सँग जोडेर प्रभावले अमितले के कुराहरु एड गर्ला अमितले क्वेशन सोध्नलाई राजजी अमितले अनम्युट गर्दिउँ त सरी ओके अमित अमित हजुर सर के सोध्नुस् त तपाईको क्वेशन ए त्यो म अघि त्यो एउटा क्वेशन त थियो अनि कमेन्ट गर्न नि खोज्दै थिए त्यो हामी एज अ फिजिसिस्ट हामी अरु बेसिसहरु खासै मन पराउँदैनौ हामी अर्थोनर्मल बेसिस नै मन पराउँछौ किनभने यसले हाम्रो प्रब्लमहरुलाई अलि सिम्प्लिफाइड गर्छ हाम्रो ओभरल्याप इन्टिग्रलहरु धेरै मन पराउँदैनौ अर्थोनर्मल बेसिसहरु युज गर्यो भने ओभरल्याप इन्टिग्रलहरु खासै आउँदैन त्यही भएर वी फिजिसिस्ट लाइक अर्थोनर्मल बेसिस रादर द्यान अदर टाइप्स अफ बेसिस एन्ड अफकोर्स इफ वी निड अदर टाइप्स अफ बेसिस देन वी अलवेज गो फ्रम अर्थोनर्मल बेसिस टु अदर बेसिस फ्रम बाई युनिटरी ट्रान्सफर्मेसन र अर्को बेसिसहरू छ भने पनि अर्थोनर्मल बेसिस चाहियो भने हामी ग्राम स्मिथ अर्थोगनाइजेसन प्रोसेसबाट अभियसली अर्थोनर्मल बेसिस पाउन सक्छ त्यो कमेन्ट गर्न खोज्दै थिएँ अनि अर्को कुरो त्यो हामी जुन फ्रेम्स हजुरले भन्दै हुनुहुन्थ्यो त्यो फ्रेम्समा जुन नम्बर अफ भेक्टर्सहरू छ त्यसको नम्बर अफ भेक्टर्स र हामी यदि इफ वी वान्ट टु चुज अर्थोनर्मल बेसिस त्यसमा भएको नम्बर अफ भेक्टर्स अनि डेमेन्सन अफ दि स्पेस यो तीनटाको के रिलेसन छ भन्ने सोध्नु मन लाग्यो द आन्सर इज नो वी क्यान नट डू दैट वी क्यान नट हैव दैट द आन्सर इज नो इफ वी हैव मोर वेक्टर्स देन द डिमेंशन द ऑर्थोगोनलिटी इज नॉट पॉसिबल ओके अनि नेक्स्ट प्रभाकर युनिट वेक्टर त्यो वेक्टरको युनिट लेंथ सबैको 1 1 हुन सक्छ लेंथ सबै वेक्टरको लेंथ 1 हुन सक्छ लेंथ 1 गर्न सकिन्छ त्यो पनि एकदमै रेस्ट्रिक्टेड छ तर गर्न सकिन्छ तर एंगल 90 डिग्री गर्ने हो भने अर्थोगनल गर्ने हो भने इफ एज लङ एज यु हैव मोर वेक्टर्स देन द डिमेंशन वी कैन नॉट डू दैट ओके एउटा कुरा हामीले चाहिँ नि आफ्नो किसिमले बुझाउने गर्छौं यो हिलबर्ट स्पेस लाई यो इन्फाइनाइट डाइमेंशनल बट काउन्टेबल भनेर भन्छौं नि इन्फाइनाइट डाइमेंशनल बट काउन्टेबल अनि त्यसले म्याथमेटिक्स म्याथमेटिसियनले कसरी त्यसलाई एक्सप्लेन गर्नुहुन्छ होला हाम्रो काउन्टेबल भनेको हामीले त्यो जी छ नि सेट अफ इन्टिजर्स हजुर सेट अफ इन्टिजर्स सँग 1 टु 1 करेस्पोन्डेन्स राख्नलाई हामीले काउन्टेबल हुन्छ ओके ओके 1 टु 1 जस्ट फर एक्जामपल बेसिस लिनु पर्यो भने x1 x2 x3 x4 गर्दै त्यो जति त्यो इन्टिजर छ नि इन्टिजरले इन्डेक्स गर्न मिल्ने सेट भयो भने त्यो काउन्टेबल भयो हजुर जस्तै अब 0 देखि 1 सम्मको सेट लियो भने 0 देखि 1 सम्मको पुरै सेट लियो भने हैन 0 देखि 1 सम्म सबै नम्बर लियो भने त्यो इन्टिजरले त्यसलाई इन्डेक्स गर्न सकिन्छ त्यो भित्र भएको नम्बरलाई इन्टिजर युज गरे भने इन्टिजर पनिले त्यो इन्डेक्स गर्न सकिन्छ त्यो देयर आर टु मेनी अफ देम त्यो चाहिँ इन्फिनिट भयो हजुर त्यो चाहिँ काउन्टेबल भयो काउन्टेबल भनेको बेसिकली सेट अफ इन्टिजर सँग सेट जुन चाहिँ सेट अफ इन्टिजर जस्तो देखिन्छ त्यसलाई काउन्टेबल भन्छ हामीले अनि एउटा कुरा मैले यहाँ शेयर गर्न चाहे यो आइन्स्टाइन ले चाहिँ यो आफ्नो केही प्रब्लम सल्भ गर्नको लागि हिलबर्टलाई भेट्नलाई हिलबर्ट चाहिँ नि गोटिङगनमा हुनुहुन्थ्यो गोटिङगन युनिभर्सिटीमा अनि वहाँ जानुहुन्थ्यो अनि जाँदाखेरि हिलबर्टको चाहिँ त्यहाँ क्वारेन्टाइन हुन्थ्यो हिलबर्टले चाहिँ एसिस्टेन्टहरू राखेको थियो नैदर पनि त्यहाँ हुनुहुन्थ्यो एसिस्टेन्ट हिलबर्टको अनि त्यो जो पनि भेट्न जानेहरूलाई केही म्याथमेटिकल क्वेश्चन्सहरू सोध्ने गरिन्थ्यो र त्यो क्वेशन्स उसले एन्सर गर्न सक्यो भने मात्रै हिलबर्टसँग भेट्न पाइन्थ्यो अनि आइन्स्टाइनले पनि दुईचोटी एटेम्प्ट गर्नुभयो दुईचोटी उहाँ क्वारेन्टाइनमा फेल हुनुभयो आई सी ओके त्यसपछि थर्ड एटेम्प्टमा गएर उहाँले भेट्न पाउनु भएको थियो हिलबर्टलाई आई सी अनि उहाँको क्वेशन्स चाहिँ नि के थियो भने त्यसको डिटेल एन्सर चाहिँ म्याथमेटिसियनले कसरी दिनुभयो भट्टजीले बुझ्नुहुन्छ मैले त बुझेको छैन आइन्स्टाइनको क्वेशन्स के थियो भने त्यो बेला क्वान्टम मेकानिक्सको अगेन्स्टमा उहाँ हुनुहुन्थ्यो र उहाँको क्वेशन के थियो भने यो स्क्वायर इन्ट्रिगेबल फंक्सन हुन्छ नि स्क्वायर इन्ट्रिगेबल फंक्सन चाहिँ फाइनाइट हुने लाई एडजस्ट गर्न सक्ने स्पेस कस्तो खालको स्पेस हुन्छ होला अथवा उहाँ चाहिँ फेज स्पेसतिर नै कन्फाइन हुनुहुन्थ्यो क्लासिकल स्पेसतिर 
पी तो हमें ठा हिल वर्ड स्पेस यूज में आयो अइसाइन को क्वेश्चन थियो कि यो स्क्वायर इंट्रेगेबल फंक्शन यो फाइनाइट तो फंक्शन फाइनाइट होने स्क्वायर इंट्रेगेबल ने सर्टेन भैल्यू दिने नर्मलाइज होने तो खाले फंक्शन एडजस्ट होने खाले स्पेस को बारे में क्वेश्चन सो अभी ये हिलवर्ड स्पेस बाहेक अरु स्पेस खाले स्क्वायर इंट्रेगेबल फंक्शन एड्रेस करने खाले हो कि हम तो हिलवर्ड मत पढ़ाया हो थोड़े तो बनी। I as to morphism, you know, sir, the square integrability has to do with Hilbert space. Okay. Bini sir. Azur, aru questions please. Prabhakar, only like there, 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 there. Ki aato chahiye onna baat. Please, Prabhakar. Aru, aru like bini mom. So, so, hey, time boys, mom. Okay, Prabhakar, please go ahead. Ab Hilbert is a tetti ve mohle ta test to puja sir. Jaise. सिग्नल भी बिलंग्स टू आर एन सी जस्ते इस में जस्ते अब गिटार में जस्ते छावड़ा तार बे छावड़ा तार को छावड़ा बॉजेबन छावड़ा सिग्नल आए वैसे यो चीज़ इस पड़े निकले को सिग्नल रुके तो भी बिलंग्स टू आर एन जस्ते हो कि छावड़ा और तो सिंथेसाइज़ लेकर जन छावड़ा तार ला एक कोई � Okay, even the Agari question, I have a wrong answer. Even the Agari question, I have a square integral. Just the Rn is Hilbert space. Rn is Hilbert space. So, we have a norm. So, the square integral is a norm. Rn is a norm. So, we have a square integral. Hilbert is a norm. So, we have a square integral. Rn is 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 a Hilbert space. Rn is a Hilbert space. So, the square integral function is a continuous setting. फिर that's an example of Hilbert space. Hilbert space is an example of Hilbert space. Exactly. So, that's an example of Hilbert space. Sorry. And you know, Dr. Sridharam Khadkali is one of the questions. You have a guitar, 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 छोड़ तार ले यो भी ले छोड़ ले रिप्रेजेंट करते हैं अंतिम छोड़ तार मतलब n is equal to the b belongs to R n जन n को ठाम six लिखना पाएं जाते हैं नहीं 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 n को हम six नहीं तो छोड़ तो सब तो सब ना सरकार सही ना अब तो तार करें को मार सही तो frequency तो तो मैं को छोड़ तार मतलब सब पे सब पे तार को आपने frequency में से छोड़े को कला individually ह Expansion coefficient just to work. So, your frequency, for example, if you have a sine curve, 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 you depending on what is x of k. If you have a sine curve, if you have a sine curve, then you have a Fourier series. If you have a Fourier series, if you have a sine x, then you have a sine 2x, then you have a sine 3x, then you have a sine 4x. अब ये कौशल वगैरह मल्टीप्लाई भाग को सी के सर्वाइव कर से कौशल वगैरह मल्टीप्लाई भाग को सी के सर्वाइव कर देना अब ये वाला सी फोर सर्वाइव करे बने सी फोर सर्वाइव करने का मतलब क्या हुआ बने यह साइन फोर एक्स सर्वाइव करे है ना साइन फोर एक्स ले बने त्यो त्यो साइन को फोर एक्स को फ्रीक्वेंसी यो सिग्नल सर सर मैले यो उता फ्रेम मा फ्रेम को चाहिए बेसिस सेट बंदा थॉप एलिमेंट उनसा बन रहा बनु वाले को चाहिए नहीं फ्रेम मा एक्जेक्टली अन्य मैले सोच ना फजिको जनरली आम्रे चाहिए बेसिस सेट लेने यो उता यो ग्रुप को अथवा यो स्पेस को सबे कुला डिफाइन करने सके इंसा बन रहा बन इंसा एक्स्ट्रा एलिमेंट फ्लेक्सिबिलिटी चाहिए वो कंस्ट्रक्शन में 
अब आर एन में अब आर टू में कैसे बने बेसिस को लाइक चाहिए बने सब में दूसरा एलिमेंट भाई ने पुया चाहे ना तो तो आर टू में पढ़ने बेहतर लाइ रिप्रेजेंट करना है तो दूसरा बेहतर भाई पुया ले अब ये वाला सिग्नल सब पढ़ान करने ये वाला सिग्नल सब आर टू में पढ़ने सिग्नल सब का कोड कुने ये वाला सोर्स बाढ़ रहा कंप्यूटर बाढ़ रहा और कुछ सोर्स आप पढ़ान करें बने आर टू में पढ़ने बेहतर लाइ तो दूसरा बेसिस को माध्यम ले पढ़ाया ब यो फ्लेक्सिबिलिटी बनने को रहता है ना हमरो यो नॉर्मल नॉर्मल क्वांटम मैकेनिक्स फिजिक्स रा यो नॉन रिलेटिविस्टी क्वांटम मैकेनिक्स बनो तो फिजिक्स रा केमिस्ट्री में हमें पॉर्ट्स हो जहाँ बेसिस डिफाइन करें जा त्यान चाहिए यो फ्लेक्सिबिलिटी हो तो रहेना था जब आई मी क्यूएफटी में अगर एक जना भाई ले लम्स वाले भाई ले सो जाते हैं मालिक बीच में बनो पाए ना तो किन सायो बन जाए ना अब कंस्ट्रक्शन को लाइक बनी अब और तो ना कुने योड़ा बेसिस अब फोर ईयर बेसिस आर फोर में स्टैंडर्ड बेसिस कंस्ट्रक्शन करने को ले बने तो कंस्ट्रक्शन करने कुने फ्रीडम साइन है तो योड़ा तो डेटा हाइड करने पर ही बने हाइड करता कि रिपाइन ऑप्शन होने से अन्य आर फोर में पांच वाला घटना यूज़ करने वाले कदम कदम से एक वाला डेटा हराया ले बने बने देन यू कैन गेट योर सिग्नल बैक तो 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 बने ऑप्शन होने से तो इसको एडवांटेज में लगी बने एडवांटेज में से डिसएडवांटेज में से दीदी नित्य तो नित्य तो तीन बेटर तो डिपेंडेंट होने पर ही आजा कि इनमें आर फोर में पांच बेटर लागे मिलते थे तो डिपेंडेंट भाई आजा तो डिपेंडेंट भाई आजा तो उन लोगों की तो कोहरेंस देखा है नहीं कती कसल से इंडिपेंडेंट तो सब कोई बेटर को बीस को डिस्टेंस एस पार एस पॉसिबल सब बने तो पांच सवा दस राती को भैंसा क्यों है ना हमें आज एक क्वेश्चन लेना सकते हैं एक दिन वड़ा दूसरा आठ सा जीन सर जीन सर वड़ा कोई जीन सर भी वड़ा सकते हैं अजूल अजूल मेरे वड़ा क्या क्वेश्चन होगा नहीं साले जिस अति आइले यहाँ देखा उनको मलाई मेरे पूजा अंशाले डिस्क्रिप्ट बेसिस एक पलाई हो यदि पुठामा लेट एस बी हिलवर्ड हिलवर्ड स्पेस बने को भाई तो मेरे लास्ट को तो मैट्रिक्स थ्योरी जो मेरे कंप्रेशन सेंस में गया थी तो चेंज करने पड़े होंगे तो फ्रेम हरु जो सब भाई जो फिजिसिस्ट ले करने सही एल टू माह एल टू एल टू स्क्वायर इंटीग्रल फंक्शन माह और को और को आम लेट टिपिकल दिखे आऊँ सब बने Continuous space in L2? Yes, in L2. L2 is not square integrable. Yes, in L2. Continuous space is not square integrable. Continuous space is not square integrable. No. There are functions, but the basis is square integrable. Delta function is square integrable. So, delta function itself is not a basis. So, delta function is not a basis. ओके डीन सर लाइक हजुर तबरत सर डीन सर को हजुर सर मैं बिनिल सर धन्यवाद मेरे क्वेश्चन बंदा पनी पहले भारत जिला ही धन्यवाद दें यो कोविड नाइनटीन में पनी हमी सुरक्षित सों भारत जी सर को मेरे साथी बने को तो देरी लामो साथी हमी क्यों में पनी काम करें हों संगे पौरे हों पनी क्रिकेट पनी भाटी जी खूब खेलने उन्हें तो मलाई था अच्छा हाँ जरूर रा क्यों मैं पनी सर भाटी जी आगे डाटा साइंस रा कंप्यूटेशन मैथमेटिक्स को पूरा करने को आईसीटीपी में नहीं भी आईसीटीपी में नहीं कि क्रिकेट खेलने वाला क्या भाटा सारे हाँ जरूर हाँ भाटी जी वाटा खेला दी पनी उन्हें तो अंडरग्रेजुएट अगर सर ले रामलो को रागनु वो इंटरडिसिप्लिनरी रिसर्च एक्टिविटीज लाइक प्रोमोट करनु पड़ता 
रेपाल को कंटेस्ट में मैं एट जिम्मेदारी भी दिखे मैथमेटिक्स में ग्रांट्स कसरी लियाने तुम्हें मैथ भाई साथ ही अब सरकार ने ना मैथ हटाने प्रयास कर भादा खी भोलि को जेनेरेशन में मैथ बलिओ भैन भी अब एवं भन न डिफ्रेंट मैथमेटिकल स्ट्रक्चर मध्य एट इनर प्रोडक्ट स्पेस को हिलवर्ड स्पेस को बाट ये एप्लीकेशन हम फिजिक्स में अभी पाई रह थुप्रे स्पेसिज जैसे मैं मेट्रिक स्पेस में काम कर इनर प्रोडक्ट स्पेस नर्म वेक्टर स्पेस टोपोलॉजिकल स्पेस एवं स्पेस भि को एटा हिलवर्ड स्पेस को ये ह्यूज एप्लीकेशन सेयर कर कलेक्टिव वे में हमें धेरे कुरा कर सकता सम भरसर को रिसर्च देखि लिये रिसेंट एप्लीकेशन था पाइय सर दुईटा कुरा मैं मैथमेटिकल पार्ट भापनी दुईटा कुछ मैं सर के भून पे भादा खेल एटा तो ये सर अरुण को यूएसए में जो भन्न पीआई हो सर ग्रांट्स को लगी भादा खेल नेपलिज कंटेस्ट में सर तब नेपाल काम करवस्था में यहाँ ग्रांट्स कसरी इंटर रिनेट कर सकता यूनिवर्सिटी में कोलाबरेटिव काम करें एट को बारे में सर ने कई कुछ कर दून भाई हमी भन न सीनियर प्रोफेसर जो इन्वल्व छ रिसर्च में सकने तो आपको लेवल बट कर हमी तर ते अलग भन न ग्रांड्सक रूप में हमें कसरी इस इंपावर कर सकता तो एटा बट सर आपको अनुभव एट सेयर कर दून हो रक्की अब यह अनलाइन ने एट सजिलो पाइर भोलि बट सर को एक्सपर्टिज हमें रेगुलर कोर्स में चाहिए हो क्योंकि सर यूएसए में ट्रम्प कह पाए सर को एक्सपर्टिज हमें चाहिए में मैं ग्रांड्स को अलग इंटरलिंक कर दिन सर जैसे में के जो हमें प्रयास कर सर जैसे कि मेडिकल संग बाय मैथमेटिक्स यूज करने बाय टेक्नोलॉजी यूज करने है तर इन जेनरल मैथमेटिक्स भाई साथ ही साहे गाड़ो विषय काम छाइन भाई जो एटा इमेज छर ने अब गवर्नमेंटमें लेवल हेन भाई अब मैथ गाड़ो भो वर्ल्ड बैंक को रिपोर्ट अनुसार मैथ अब घटना गई रह एक किसिम हे अब टीचर लंपावर कर करिकुलम मिनिमाइज करम संकेत है तेज अलग हमें कम्युनिटी में जाना कसरी इंटर डिशिप्लिनरी एक्टिविटी प्रमोट कर सकता र्रांड्स कसरी इंटर रिनेट कर सकता भट्ट सर ने आपको अनुभव सेयर कर दिन प्लीज सर लोसन तब एकदम डिफिकल्ट क्वेश्चन हो रहा को जवाब हम बस इस बस रेगुलरली बस डेफिनेटली इसको कंक्रीट आंसर निल सकता खोज सकता मेरे एक्सपीरियंस ग्रांड में एकदम लिमिटेड एक्सपीरियंस ये यूनिवर्सिटी बट मैं तीन चार वा ग्रांट एप्लाई करें तीन चार चार पांच वा जी चार पांच मध्य धेस रिजेक्ट भो डिनाई भो डिनाई होता खेल ग्रांट लेखने एक्सपीरियंस वास्तव में काउंट होद हमें पा दुई तीनवट ग्रांट मध्य एवं ग्रांट अंडर ग्रेजुएट स्टूडेंट कसरी हमें मोटिवेट कर सौ मैथमेटिकल साइंसेस में कसरी मोटिवेट कर सौ भाई हम आइडिया थे ग्रांट में तो ग्रांट मन पे उन्नीस एनएसएफ नेशनल साइंस फाउंडेशन को ग्रांट हो तिमी को राम साम कर हमें दिए तीन चार वर्ष जी हमें ग्रांड में काम गये बेसिकली हमें मैथमेटिक्स को कंसेप्ट प्योर मैथमेटिक्स भो मैथ को क्या मैथ ले करने अब मैथमेटिशियन ने मैथ करने हो फिजिशिस्ट ने मैथ यूज करने हो मैथ यूज करने भाग भर कतिपय कुछ तेसन सकूँ पर्सपेक्टिव आई वॉज इन एबल टू आंसर यू नो मैं कतिपय कुछ मैं मेरे अपने पर्सपेक्टिव आंसर करें मैं लगता को जवाब खोजे रामस जवाब दिखा मैं सोच रखे मैं फिजिशिस्ट को पर्सपेक्टिव इंजीनियर को पर्सपेक्टिव हेद्दे तो फरक देखि हम लोग सब एक ठाव में कंबाइन करो ग्रांड लेखा थे फिजिशिस्ट को मानी में एप्लाई करना पाँथ इंजीनियरिंग को पाथ्य मैथमेटिशियन ने कर पाने हम बेसिकली विद्यार्थी मैथ मैथमेटिकल एप्लीकेशन सीखने ग्रांड थे समर में समर में छ हफ्ता को वर्कसप करने विद्यार्थी यूएसए भरी को सब तरह के विद्यार्थी इन्वाइट करने सिलेक्शन करें तो हम बाहर जान विद्या लिंथ एवरी इयर चार वर्षसम चलाये तो विद्यार्थी मैथमेटिक्स को एप्लीकेशन हमें सीखने तो कोर मैथमेटिक्स को कोर्स है मैथमेटिक्स को एप्लीकेशन तेज को पार्टिशिपेन्ट हु फिजिक्स को स्टूडेंट इंजीनियर भी थी डिटेल में मैं उसमें कर सकु तर अ जमा में कैसे भाई अब यह मार्केट कुछ ट्रेंड में गई राख्या हमें चलना सकेन तो ग्रांट लियाने कुछ असंभव 
ग्रांड लिने ग्रांड वालाले चाहिँ कनेक्सन यो आइडियाको कनेक्सन कहाँसम्म हुन्छ भनेर हेर्छ त्यसले सबैले समेट्छ कि समेट्दैन भन्ने हेर्छ अब नेपालको परिप्रेक्ष्यमा हेर्यो भने अब नेपालको इन्टरनल ग्रान्ट भन्ने भएन नेपालमा त्यो ग्रान्ट नै छैन ल्याउने भनेको इन्टरनल ग्रान्ट होइन एक्सटर्नल ग्रान्ट ल्याउने होइन बाहिरबाट ल्याउने हो अब बाहिरबाट दिने ग्रान्ट दिनेहरूले डेभलपिङ कन्ट्रीको हिसाबले हेर्छ हामीले एप्लाई गरेको फरक कन्सेप्ट हो डेभलपिङ कन्ट्रीको लागि ग्रान्टहरू चाहिँ डेफिनेटली छन् थुप्रै ग्रान्टहरू छन् जस्तै हामीले कन्फरेन्स गऱ्यो नि पोर्सल पोखरामा गरेको त्यसको आधी भन्दा बढी पैसा हामीले ग्रान्टबाट ल्याएको त्यो ग्रान्ट कन्फरेन्सको त्यो डिटेल हामी म सेयर गर्न सक्छु राइटिङमा छ हामीसँग त्यो किनभने हामीले यसरी यो ट्रेनिङ गर्दा चाहिँ वी आर ट्रेनिङ यङ म्याथमेटिसियन्स अफ नेपाल भनेर त्यो यङ म्याथमेटिसियनलाई ट्रेन गर्ने हिसाबले मलाई लाग्छ त्यसको बजेट थियो होला चालिस लाख जति अठार बिस लाख जति क्लोज टु द्याट अमाउन्ट वी रिसिभ फ्रम ग्रान्ट तर आफूले के गरिराखेको छ अनि कसको लागि गरिराखेको छ र कसरी गरिराखेको छ तिनवटा चाहिँ इम्पोर्टेन्ट क्वेश्चन छ एकदम कन्क्रिट आन्सर चाहिन्छ त्यो ग्रान्ट प्याकरलाई हु इज हाउ आर यू कन डू दिस वाई आर यू डुइङ दिस एन्ड हु आर यू डुइङ दिस फर हामी बसेर कुरा गर्न सकिन्छ ग्रान्ट सम्बन्धी अब यो तपाईँ कम्प्युटेसनल राख्नु भएको छ त्यो राम्रो कुरा त्यो कम्प्युटेसनल म्याथमेटिक्सको प्रोग्राम गर्नु भएको छ भने द्याट सेल्स इन द मार्केट अब अब हाम्रो म्याथमको करिकुलमहरू डेटा साइन्सतिर गइसक्यो धेरै युनिभर्सिटीले डेटा साइन्स इन्ट्रोड्युस गरिसके अब डेभलपिङ कन्ट्रीमा हाम्रो यहाँ पनि युनिभर्सिटीमा मैले डिपार्टमेन्टमा यही भनिरहेको छु हामी डेटा साइन्स लिन जानु सक्दैनौँ डेटा साइन्स जानलाई अहिले हामीलाई स्टेटिस्टिक्सको कोर्स चाहिन्छ चार पाँचवटा कम्प्युटर साइन्सको कोर्स चाहिन्छ चार पाँचवटा म्याथको कोर्स चाहिन्छ चार पाँचवटा त्यति गरेपछि बल्ल हामी डेटा साइन्स गर्न सक्छौँ अब त्यति कोर्स गर्नु त विद्यार्थी सधै सक्दैन उ त ग्रेजुएट भएर हिँड सक्नु पर्ने हुन्छ त्यही भएर हामीले गर्नु भनेको अहिले इकोनोमिक के म्याथमेटिकल इकोनोमिक्स त्यो पछि चाहिँ एक्सपिरियन्समा जानको लागि कम्प्युटेसनल म्याथमेटिक्स पछि डेटा साइन्समा जानको लागि स्टेप बाई स्टेप गर्ने अहिले मलाई लाग्छ नेपालको हिसाबले कम्प्युटेसनल म्याथमेटिक्स इज हट नमस्कार जस्तो यहाँ हामीले म्याग्निच्युड लियौँ भने चाहिँ नि फेज त लस हुन्छ होइन म्याग्निच्युड चाहिँ अब एब्सोलुटै भनिन्छ फेज लस हुन्छ भने त्यस्तो बेलामा चाहिँ त्यो इन्फर्मेसन चाहिँ रिट्र्याक गर्नुलाई अरू कुनै टेक्निकबाट चाहिँ त्यो फेजलाई फेरि लिन्छ कि होइन त्यतिकैबाट काम चलाइ मैले जो गरेको पेपरमा हो त्यो फेजलेस इन्फर्मेसनबाट नै उनीहरूलाई चाहिने इन्फर्मेसन पाइने भएको भएर त्यो फेजलेस इन्फर्मेसन रिकन्स्ट्रक्ट गर्नु नै उद्देश्य हो मेरे जानकारी में सही नहीं है मेरे जानकारी में हां हां थोड़ा